of this. I thought because I was on the KTM, things would be a lot easier. But it appears you still need some skills. G'day guys, Steve with Broken Sprocket. This is my very first ride of my brand new KTM 350 EXCF. Yes, I did manage to get a few scratches in it, but I didn't buy the bike to sit and look at it. I bought the bike to ride it. So, let's get started. This is my very first KTM, in fact it's my very first European dirt bike and everybody was saying how much I would love the hydraulic clutch and yes it was nice but it was not the standout point for me. The standout point for me was the engine and the weight of the bike. So let's start first with the weight of the bike. This was something that I noticed instantly and it was absolutely fantastic how light the bike is. Considering I drop the bike more than I ride it, it makes it so much easier to pick the bike up. Okay, the weight of the bike is just one part of the package. The second thing I noticed and really loved is the engine on this bike has great lugging power and is less likely to stall than my old 450, although I still managed to stall the bike without any troubles. But the engine is awesome. Once I get used to this engine I'm going to have so much more confidence than on the old 450. And also there's plenty of power there if you'd like to go fast. This bike could almost pick up the wheel in almost any gear and has plenty of top end. Tires on this bike are not the best, they're Maxxis tires and even the guy at the dealership said that I will not like these tires as everybody complains about them. Well I think once I get tubeless tires and um, a different set of tires I will really get a lot better traction than what I was having here. But part of my problem was that I was being too cautious as a rider as I didn't want to scratch the new bike instead of just riding at my normal pace or normal type of riding. with Brimbo brakes. I've never used Brimbo brakes before and I didn't really notice anything about the brakes so I suppose that's a good thing. It means they were doing their job without me noticing in any way the shape or form that there was anything different going on. There is one thing that's a real standout to me that I do not like about the bike at all. And that is the stand. Many times I'd put the stand down and it seemed like it was too short for the bike or it would just sink into the ground. There wasn't a big enough pad to stop it sinking into the ground. Many times I went to pick up the camera and place it in different positions and I turned back to get the bike and I uh, was unable to find the bike as it was laying on the ground because the stand had failed. So this is the biggest downfall for me on this bike. It's the stand. Just about to take off after getting up that hill. And I did this stick going all the way through. Goes all the way down into in line with the sprocket. Lucky it didn't damage the fuel line. Oh, geez, it's hard to get out of here. Try snap a bit off. There we go. After riding for a short time and not getting much airflow through to the radiators, the bike began to overheat. Now when I picked the bike up from the dealership, the dealer said to not re-top up the coolant into the end of the bike because it will overheat, just spill out what it doesn't want and then it should be happy from then on. Well it did overheat and I was concerned, so should I put a fan on this bike for anybody else that owns one or just let it set at its own level and be happy enough?
for this. It just keeps on getting hot. It's not loving the single trails. Okay, the trail goes up this nasty little section here with lots of rocks. So, this will be a test. You can probably see how steep it is if I go to the side like this as it drops into the river. But yeah, nasty little section. No one rides it too, so everything's real mulchy. So there's no traction at all. Breeze didn't hit me. It sort of made me fall off, pushed me off the back of the bike. Whew. That tree branch grabbed me right in the chest and almost pulled me off the back of the bike. The suspension in this bike is the WP Explorer. Um, I've really enjoyed the suspension on this slow single trail type stuff But I didn't do any fast type riding where I was hitting stuff really hard So I can't really judge what it's like on really fast hard hitting stuff But on this sort of slow stuff here on these single trails and these rocks and things like that it performed quite well As I've said before I've never owned a European bike but I have ridden a KTM 500, my friend's one, and I've also ridden a KTM 250 and was quite impressed with the way they rode and I thought they were quite user friendly. You always get concerned if you're buying the correct kind of bike when you purchase and you've never ridden a bike the same as you're buying before. This is the first 350 bike I've ever ridden in any make, model or manufacturer and I'm very happy I've purchased this bike as I feel it will do the job that I'm looking for. has a six-speed gearbox and it's a really smooth shifting gearbox normally on the Japanese bikes which is pretty much what I've only ever owned you really feel the gear engage and click and you can actually feel it on your foot it's a clicking motion whereas this one here is almost no click at all of it you, you can barely feel it's changed gear so it's a really sweet gearbox it's actually a decent trail just got to wear it in a bit more was an awesome little hill climb. Not overly difficult but it was a nice little upgrade and it had some rocks and different sort of stuff going on here. I just loved it the way that the engine just idled on up with virtually little effort. It was nowhere near going to stall or buck me off or do anything crazy. It just sort of walked up on its own pace and it was fantastic. It does that easy. Just crawled up that. say it doesn't stall and then I stall my fault just got to get used to the bike finding is the pedal. It's probably better if it had a little bit bigger back brake pad because it's, it's kind of hard to find it.
next or go to the Broken Sprocket video library and choose another top video. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. After all, it's for free and guaranteed to make your day 20% better. If you're already a subscriber and you're having a bad day, just think it could have been 20% worse. You can also follow Broken Sprocket on Instagram. So, I'll see you in the next video.